What stopped you from killing yourself? My mother always told me, if it weren't for you I would lose my will to live. If you're ever feeling insecure, just think of how fucking amazing you must be to make someone feel that way about you. Not to downplay what either of you said, but it's fair to consider that that kind of heavy compliment suggests the possibility of overinvestment in someone else to compensate for personal failure or lack of achievement. I'm not saying that about this guy's mother, but you have to know that some who express similar sentiment are so internally bankrupt that having children, no matter who they end up being is enough to make them angelic motivators in a parent's eyes. Knowing that my dog depended on me and that if I did anything to hurt myself it would hurt my brother, you're right, I'd hurt the shit out of my baby brother. He is a senior in high school I can't do that to hi miss ya. I'm sorry for being so selfish. Don't feel guilty for how you feel. It will only make you feel even worse. We're humans, not machines, sometimes we get overwhelmed by stuff that happens around us. Recently, the awareness that it's an issue that brings me a lot of suffering. If killing myself were what I actually wanted, there wouldn't be any apprehensiveness or emotional discomfort. It'd be like eating a pizza or taking a shower. No matter how motivated I feel in the moment, there's at least some part of me that doesn't want that. So maybe that's the part that makes more sense. I tried to kill myself last year and I ended up on a 72-hour hold at my local hospital. After losing my father and my aunt in the past two months, I don't think I want to be alive anymore, friend. Hey man, would you like to talk about how you're feeling? I volunteer at a local distress hotline and I'm free for a Skype call. We could exchange details via P. Monsieur. My brother, he found me, pass out drunk, in the car that was running in the garage, dragged me out and yelled at me cause I could have died. In that moment I realized I couldn't do that to him or the rest of my family or girlfriend. As soon as I was with it enough to realize that, I was happy I was able to go in and destroy the note I had left before him or anyone else could find it. When I refer to it I say I once failed at failing. It was a turning point to me, he literally stopped me, and it's been my family since that it kept me here. They deserve better than that from me and I love the monsieur. Failed attempt. Failed 3x. Glad I, even on my worst days, I know my life has been worth living. My best days haven't even happened yet, I was deployed to Afghanistan twice. I was on my second tour as a combat engineer as an IED sweeper. I cleared roads, LZs and footroutes. Two months before going home off my second tour, I went to turn my rifle to spray my thoughts on the COC ceiling. This was three o'clock. No one should be around at that time. But as soon as I put that cold muzzle in my mouth, a Marine walked in, saw me and said please don't bro. With the look in his eyes I'll never forget. He actually cared if I blew my brains out. We talked most of the night. I found out that he came up because I seemed off on the last mission. So he walked up to the COC just to make sure I was okay. We became really great friends after that. But what made it even better that helped me is we never told anyone. He was my radio operator. He put his name on every mission I was leading, just to keep an eye out for me. It's been 10 years since that day. He calls me two to three times a week to this day, just to check in on me. I stood up at his wedding couple years ago. Next month I'm fly out to see his daughter get baptized. I'm his daughter's godfather. He saved my life and that's a debt I have to pay. To this day I still feel like killing myself at least a couple times a month. But in the Marine Corps we have honor and loyalty. A life for a life and debt is always paid. He has no idea that's why I still haven't killed myself. His wife thinks I'm the happiest person on this planet but when my buddy looks at me, I know he knows how empty I am inside because all he can say is, yeah, the good old days buddy. Edit I'm not the best at punctuation and spelling. I really needed this, thank you very much for sharing. I am learning to live for others and not just for myself.
I have a little brother who is a senior in high school, I can't let him down. I can't be like that to hi monsieur. Mate I'm glad this thread helps you. For my part, the way I manage to stop it is to talk to my mind as if it were someone separate from me. Treat depression as a needy kid that doesn't know what he's doing. Loyally to those who passed and left a legacy that has to keep going and make his mark in the world. It may take decades, it may be tomorrow. You make your mark and maybe you die the next day. Just leave it out there. Instead of suicide, think death is just around the corner, so take me whenever you want to. In the meantime, you can enjoy time with your brother, make friends, do stuff for your wellness. Imagine being at his wedding, seeing your niece born. Mate so many happy memories await us. I live for my mama would be sad. Yeah, I can't do it while she's still alive. My best friend and his little sister. She had killed herself shortly before that. It showed me how much impact it has on those who love you. It helped me see that this was something I couldn't do to my friends and family the day I was really close to doing it. My best friend called me. He was crying, which is pretty extreme in his case since he opens up to his me, but even I have only seen him cry like two times since he is such a strong person. I instantly went to visit Hi Monsieur. He had a breakdown since he already has to take care of his siblings has abusive parents. His sister had died not too long ago and some other reasons which are quite irrelevant to this question. That day he asked me if I would stay with him forever and if I'd be there for him and his family forever and I agreed. That time he was thankful and thought that I was the only one helping in that moment but in reality this promise was exactly what I needed and I think he helped me even more than I helped I monsieur. I had lost my purpose in life shortly before I got suicidal. He and his little siblings gave me a purpose again. The family was pretty destroyed and I knew that they needed me so I took even more care of the monsieur. Especially the twin brother of the late little sister WWHO was probably the most affected. Edit, thanks for the silver, kind stranger. It sounds like love saved you, glad you're still here. I'm not ruining my cat's life. The thought of him being hauled off to a shelter and put in a cage is just no. I guess I'll make it through, your cat must be the love of your heart. Earlier this year, the evening before my birthday, I hid away in the spare room with my antidepressants and a razor blade. I was planning to OD and slice myself to ribbons. I was psyching myself up, ready to cut up along my arm, when the door opened. I was terrified that my partner, or his mother or stepdad, had found me. Instead it was his mother's cat. The cat had never forced open a closed door before. She was barely smart enough to get through an open door. She waddled up to me and screamed in my face, with her there, I just couldn't do bring myself tough to do. Later the next day, I was in our bedroom and I was feeling really low again and contemplating ending my life. She once again forced open the bedroom door, waddled in, jumped up on the bed, and snuggled next to me. We fell asleep together. I love that cat so much, we've moved house a couple of months ago, and because she's a very dim cat. I honestly thought she would forget me. We recently visited and she let me pick her up. I was the only one she had ever let pick her up before. So I think she did actually remember me. And it made me so happy. She's a total dork and I love her. It's amazing how many replies in this thread have something to do with pets saving lives. I have one friend who has told me that his dog, categorically, has saved his life. When he was feeling low, really low, his dog wouldn't leave him alone. And it's the fact that he can't bear the thought of that dog being alone. Without him, that stopped him from going through with it. Deterrence Theory In college I studied economics. And there was a class on game theory and one of the discussions was about deterrence theory. Long story short nations options with nuclear weapons use them, and they will get used on you. Or don't use them and they may not get used on you. 
The teacher put it numerically. The benefit of not using nukes is plus one. The cost of using them is minus 500. Even though the benefit of not using them is small, it is still greater than the cost of using them this year. I use deterrence theory whenever I think about suicide. The benefit of not killing myself may be only plus one or even minus one in value. But that is still greater than the cost of killing myself which is minus 500 in this example. I wouldn't call my reasoning healthy, but it works for me. It helps to actually have friends and talk to them about it. If you don't have any friends, see a therapist. In my opinion, therapists are just friends that get paid to be friends with you. Like I said, my way of thinking isn't very healthy so I dk how much you should listen to me. This is fascinating. As a math person, this makes perfect sense to me. Glad you shared and glad it worked for you. Sheer cowardice. Sweet. Gold. It's been a minute since I got me one of them this year. That's not cowardice, it's a self-preservation instinct. Your monkey brain doesn't want to die, so it does everything it can to keep you alive. For me it sounds like a scientific definition of what we call cowardice, but I understand your point.